My dad is starting to pick wheat. Ah, oh, this is exciting. I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. Peak parking breakout. Need to move it in the second gear. There we go. Rev it up again. It's gonna move it in the field here, raise my header a bit, and drive into this spot my dad wants me to park in. There's not much wheat that grew at all here, so this is a good place to park. Idle down, lower my header. Steering wheel up. This is your top sieve, 19. The bottom one on this is eight. Yours is six or something, I think. I, I don't remember. Okay. But you got large wire concaves, so you might have to beat it up a little more to get it dry. What type of concaves do you have? Small wire. Okay, fast you go, you might have to beat your belt. Oh, up. because mine was made for like p bigger crops, right? Well, you can cut peas with it, you can't cut peas with it. You're going to get into these spots that don't hardly have anything. Okay, we were registered 28, 11, 2 points for. You don't have moisture, and I didn't want to put any heat in your combine, don't you? have to have your belt going just a little faster than you are normally. Yes. So it'll start that roll. Now we got this whole area down here. We pull a couple more rows to park. Now see it starting to feed in? Yes. This looks a little better. Well, it's a little better, but it's totally horrible. Looking. This combine is cleaning the wheat fairly well. Considering it doesn't have a lot to work with. It yeah. works better when it's thick. Yeah. The way these rotors work. It's the most satisfying when you have a thick crop, too. Yes, it is. It's irritating when you don't because you get that little bit of wheat rolling. So, if we get this set, Kate, and I'm happy, we're going to pull, go down here, like to that, that first ridge hill. Pull these passes off of here to give trucks you know, room to turn around. Here. Okay. I need to add a little more something to my seat, but I don't remember how to do it. Oh, there we go. Seat down. Yeah, back in. Front in. Rev it up. I'm still in second gear, so I'm only going nine miles an hour which is probably fast enough in this field right now. Oh, it looks like Dad started in the middle of this row, so I'll do the same here. It's been a while since I've ba done any backing up in a combine, but I am a little bit better of a combine backer-upper, so idle it down, put the back in, put the front in, then bring the RPM up, put my header down, and go. Oh gosh, this feels weird driving 2.7 miles an hour, 10 bushels an acre. This is awful. And let's see, my thrashing meter is good so I can go a little bit faster. You know the height of the header to by looking at how much silver stuff is floating on the side kind of arm of the combine. I always drive a little bit under the combine's limit at first because you're just getting used to it. You don't know how much it can handle. You don't remember the noises of the combine and things like that. I take it easy, and then once I get comfortable with it, I like to start to push the limit a bit more. Dad just gave me the thumbs up. This wheat is probably what it would be like in a really, really bad section of a field normally. I mean, it wouldn't even be this bad. Six bushels an acre is absolutely horrific. An average crop would probably be around 60, 70 bushels, 75. A really bumper crop would be, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90, 100 bushels per acre. So to have a crop that's not even 10 bushels per acre is, is a sad thought for farmers in our area. And I couldn't even pick up that last piece. So my dad's working on the next part. I'm just gonna leave my header running because I don't think there's any point in turning it off once I'm just gonna start again. We're making some room for the trucks to come and be able to park. Um, so the combines always have to like not go a full round and just peel off an area in the field. Our grain cart, 
that broke down last year. So if you've been watching my channel since last harvest, you would know it did break down. It is not fixed. So we, at this point, do not have a grain cart. So we'll probably just have to dump in the trucks, which is not ideal. But my uncle Chris specifically swathed our field in 80 acre segments so that we would not have to be on at a bad place when we filled up in the combine. Although we won't be filling up very much until we don't have that good of a crop. And then when I get a little ways down here, I'm going to stop to see that I'm picking up most of the crops. So I'll just stop, pick my header up, back up a ways, and I'm picking up as much as it can. I mean, you really can't do better than that. My dad didn't have to take a lesson with me this year in the combine, but actually this is my second year running this combine. The only reason he gave me combine lessons last year was because this was a whole new machine to me. Um, because that prior, for the prior two years, I had been running the 9610. There's nothing to these swaths. I'm just gonna go around this side so I don't have to drive on the wheat swath of my dad. Let's see where my other swath starts. Oh, looks like down here a little ways. It looks like this is the last row we're taking here. Hello? Hello? Yep, you're on my watch. So I'll just follow you. All right, fine. So my dad just called me and I answered on my watch. Um, because he doesn't have a radio in his combine yet, that we're gonna move to the west side and start taking some rows as well. So that would be this side. So now I'm roading over to where my dad is and I'll just give him some time and then I'll start in this area. And because I got off of the seat, my header disengaged. I didn't even put much weight off the seat. I just picked my leg up so then Idle it down, put the back in, put the header in, rev it up. Now I'll take this next row. It looks like we're still getting about nine bushels per acre, even though the swaths maybe look a little bit bigger. Bigger doesn't always mean better. However, after all of these passes, my window is almost filling up. So once we're full, we have to stop because we don't have any trucks or anything out here. Now I'm going through a bit of a coolie up with the header because this header, this side of the header is not picking up anything, but this side was way in the ground, and then you immediately have to put it back down as you come back up, and then you have to bring it back up again. It's a little bit of a science. I remember how to do it, um, but it does freak you out that first time you go through a little coolie. And a coolie is a draw in the field where water runs off. Now I'm on a little bit of a hill. Oh, it looks like my dad's stopping. Oh, probably just to see how good he's picking it up. So I'll back up a bit. Mine's doing a fairly good job considering there's not a lot of wheat here. Combines pick up wheat not as well when there's not as much in the row. Because what happens to wheat is the little almost hairs on the top of it that are attached to the grain kernel covering attach to each other. So then the wheat swath just comes in in one big piece. And when you don't have as much wheat, then more falls out on the ground because it doesn't all attach as well. I just made my turn around to start my next pass. We swath our fields going around and around and around. Some people swath back and forth. That works out really well if you have one combine, but when you have more than one or more than two, it makes it a lot tougher to find out which row you're in. So we swath all the way around. Now I'm headed through a bit of a bigger coulee. Harvest time is my favorite time of year by far. I just love it. I feel so fortunate to be able to be in the combine again and run it. These are amazing machines and you also get to be a part of growing and harvesting food that will one day be on someone's table. It's just an amazing thought. Oh, I see a grasshopper there. That's the first one I've seen today. We're not going very long today and it looks like my dad's tank is almost full so then we'll probably head back to the pickup and take a ride home because we don't have anything out here. We need to have a disc here just in case of fire. We need to have water trucks. There are many things that you need to make harvest happen and especially in case of an accident. This is what the combine looks like harvesting and that's my dad way over there. He's got a very, very full grain tank. And 
and I'll show you over here. We're getting 12, 13 bushels per acre right now, which is really a catastrophe. Here are some of my buttons and my panel. I've got my k tape tote bag right here. It looks like my dad's making his corner right now, or maybe he's just gonna turn around. Probably turn around because he looks quite full. I just realized I'm picking the wrong row. So I do not understand this because there couldn't have been another row on the other side of this. So my dad's buzzer had gone off and that's why he ended up stopping. Um, but I still have a little bit of room. I have a window out here that still has a little bit of room. So I'm gonna put my header down, start moving forward. And as you can see, this black thing on the left is what I look for float in. I'm going to make it to the end without the grain tank completely overloading and grain raining on the roof like I've done before. I also have a moisture sensor problem, so I'm not able to see from my screen what the moisture is. Then I've got grain tank full, and I think we're finished for the evening. Raise my header up and go super fast. What I'll do is I'll let my header and my sieves and the back of the combine clean out for a little while before I shut them off. So then you always shut your header off first. So I'll shut the header off. And then I'm gonna let the back clean out a little bit more and I'll shut it off as well. Gosh, my dad is ultra full of weed. That is insane. He really ran it close, way closer than I did. I'll turn the back off now. This was a very fun first day of harvest. I don't know if it's the first official day, it's just trying out the weed. While my combine is cooling down, I'll say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a little bit more about how your food gets to your table and all of the hard work farmers put in to be able to get it there. Make sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. Or you can visit the Kate's Egg website, K-A-T-E-S-A-G dot com, and purchase a Kate's Egg tote bag. They're up, made of 100% cotton and in the U.S which is amazing. And the picture of wheat is actually a picture I took on our Montana farm of winter wheat during harvest time. And the combine I drew as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.